And um, this distinction between uh, the angulation of the teeth and the underlying bone structure is a very important one. Because we, when we started this discussion, you talked about how the MSE is a game changer in orthodontics because it allows us to change the underlying structure. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, and this is a very common question that I get, is if we're only expanding the maxilla with the MSE, then how do we prevent a situation in which the upper teeth become wider than the lower teeth. And I think this might have to do with teeth angulation again. So I wanted to bring that up now. That's a really good point. I think majority of the population had this kind of question. Okay. Now remember, because we're growing into a smaller upper jaw structure. So I would say a good 99% of those patients will have compensating buckle tipping, flaring of the molars and lingual tipping of the mandibles, lingual uh, mandibular teeth. So the correction is easily, if even you don't have cross bite, again, cross bite means your, your upper teeth are biting inside the lower teeth. Even if you don't have those cross bite, by simply tipping those upper molars inward and uprising those bottom molars, then you gain the difference to expand at least a minimum six millimeter. Okay. Now, between four to six from just compensating are actually pretty reasonable number. Okay. So you can gain about four to six millimeter of expansion that you can get. Now, majority of my patient, actually the expansion I give it to them is between four to eight millimeters. It's very common between four to eight. I'll say four to six actually even more common because in reality, you don't need that much of expansion to achieve your goal of structure correction. Okay. A lot of times you see a, um, a patient with a huge space in the middle, and it's really not that necessary in my opinion. From, from my experience, even if a patient have a, a two millimeter gap happen between the front teeth, patient will really feel significant changes in their airway uh, spaces they can breathe much easier. Most of my patient, a vast majority pa patient with a four millimeter uh, gap in the middle can tell me their airway problem has gone away, okay? They usually give me a scale between one to 10, they would need an A or a nine for the four millimeter. Now, if you get six to eight millimeter expansion, then you pretty much have no airway restrictions anymore. If you have any other airway issue, it will be from other area of the body, the, 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 uh, the head and neck. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. And I can comment that when I did my MSE and I had a very early in the expansion process, probably at about uh, 30 turns, maybe 35 turns in my 12 millimeter MSE, I noticed a, a complete change in my nasal airway as you described. So I think that probably yeah. would have been maybe two or three millimeters of expansion. Uh -huh. Very every early in the process. Turns one millimeter. One more time. Every every six turn is one millimeter. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, sure. So I was, you know, well, I guess maybe more than I thought. Maybe a few yeah. millimeters in, and I felt a remarkable change in my airway. Yes, um, definitely. You probably only get about two, possibly, because you're adult. Okay, you're adult male, so you're you're. Um, the TAD, the four TAD anchor on your maxilla may have tipped maybe around two millimeter already, okay, during those expansion. So you probably, after 30 turns, technically you expand about six, uh, five millimeter, but you're actually only getting about two. I see. And where do, the, where do all those other turns go? Where is that force transferred um, to? Tipping. Because when, you, when you're forcing them, especially if you use the fast turning technique, there's even more more tipping. So when when you expand the screw the, the jack screw in the middle, put pressure on those TADs. Now those TAD will naturally start tipping sideways. Okay. Now those tipping sideways routinely goes, you will lose about minimally one to about two to three millimeter. I see really drastic tip of the of those, then you lose a good four to six millimeter total in 
in the uh, expansion space. So for male, we usually routinely have more of a tipping issue on the TAD. So I will assume after 30 turns, usually the tipping happened initially. So you probably only get about two millimeter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you experience significantly airway difference, that proves my point that even if you have two millimeter changes, you feel significant change in the airway. Yeah, no, I think that that, that point is certainly reflected in my experience, actually in my, um, in my MSE split video, I think I, which is the video I recorded to, to announce, oh my gosh, my suture split, look at this gap that formed. In that video, I noticed that I was already feeling uh, more open nasal breathing. So the nasal breathing improves very early on in the process. And while we're on this subject, someone commented on Facebook the other day, um, what percentage of MSE patients experience an improvement in nasal breathing? And my response to it was, I think it's physically impossible if there is a successful split to not have an improvement in nasal breathing. Would you, would you disagree with that? I would agree. I, I would totally agree with that. Okay. Now, in my, my interviewing with the patient, if it's a adult patient, okay, 90% 90, 90 of the time, they will say, yes, a lot of improvement. There will be 10% say, yeah, there's some minor improvement, but it's definitely improvement. I don't have anyone say no improvement, except teenagers or kids. But bear in mind, a lot of teenagers and kids, whatever they ask them, they will tell you that, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's their routine answer to yeah. any adult is, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, there's a little, <laughs> little disconnect between teenager and adult. I think that's what yeah. we do. But if you ask a responsible adult, they usually give you a pretty definite answer or definitely there is improvement. Right, right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Dr. Ting, I want to circle back to something you said. And you said that basically you could start a patient who had fairly coordinated upper and lower, meaning the upper teeth and the lower teeth were matched regardless of tipping of the teeth, right? And you could take a person who was pretty even and you could expand them four to eight millimeters and then have to do no surgical intervention on the lower. You could correct, you could match the, the expansion of the upper with the lower simply by tipping teeth. And so, so what that means is that even for a patient who starts out even, their teeth even, their teeth coordinated, not in a crossbite, visually at least, a person like that is still a candidate for the MSE. A person like that is still a candidate to expand the, the maxilla with this device. Exactly, exactly. Like I say, all you need is between two to four millimeter expansion, you will in, improve your uh, airway quality significantly. Okay. okay. Now, I always give a patient a comparison. I think we all try before, we try to breathe through a little cocktail straw. It's a common thing that when you sip on the cocktail with a straw and then you felt, mm, you know what, I can breathe through a little bit. It's difficult to breathe through a little one piece of cocktail straw. But if you have two or three cocktail straws together and you try to breathe through it, it's actually breathable. Okay. So that proves a little bit increase of the volume of your nasal cavity would drastically improve the breathable quality in your airway. I see, because a cocktail straw, of course, is a very thin type of straw, kind of like mm -hmm. the kind you might have to mix your coffee or something. Yeah. And just doubling a very, a very narrow cylinder, just doubling or tripling a very narrow space can have a dramatic change in your experience of airway. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great image. And I think that, yeah, anyone could try that right now. They could go to Dunkin' Donuts and grab a few of those brown <laughs> straws. Um, Support and, a small business. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not at this, this, uh, this interview is not being sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dr. Ting, you've emphasized a lot about improvement in airway with MSC. And I think that 
I think that it's, it's very easy to understand how splitting the suture opens up the nose. It's clear. It's physically impossible not to open the nose if you split the suture, I think you could say. Exactly. It's physically impossible to not to increase the nasal volume with the, with the true skeletal expansion of the palate. It's physically impossible. Right. 